it's time to abandon the viral pursuit. Sure, videos go viral, but we don't pursue that. We need to pursue being contagious. One, two, three, listen. This book has a lot of wisdom in it. So this is Contagious by Jonah Berger. And uh, I've read a number of his texts. Jonah, if you're watching this, hit me up. I would love to talk to you and be your friend because you really have done some awesome research and you synthesize things really well. So uh, non-paid endorsement. I just flip and love these books. Here's the thing. As marketers, we really need to identify how to make a product, product a product, service, whatever we are trying to put out to the world, as contagious as it can be. We talk about viral, I get asked to do viral videos all the time, but the better pursuit is to make a product and or service contagious. And that takes some deep thinking. So I'm going to look over here at my cheat sheet, all right, ready? So my eyes are going to go off of you over here. Jonah Berger has six categories within the notion of being able to make something contagious. These are six things to consider. Social currency, triggers, emotion, public, practical values, and stories. Social currency. Does my product help somebody find their inner remarkability? Does this make me look good because I know about it and so far you don't? Seth Godin uses the term sneezers. They are the early adopters, the people who love to be early, love to find a great new product or service, and then boast about it, or you know, coyly hide the fact, but totally publicly share the fact that they are doing something that you aren't yet. Those types of people are the leaders who start building a tribe behind them, who end up becoming the critical mass for your product. You need sneezers. They help you have a contagious product. That is social currency. The cool kids are doing it. Triggers. Are there triggers in the world that make people think of your product? So let's take, um, I came up with an example the other day of a Dasani bottled water. And you know, hey, Coca-Cola company, if you're watching this, freebie for you. Um, if you are Dasani and you do some kind of campaign that compares and contrasts a awesome, refreshing, cold, crisp bottle of Dasani water with a cold breeding ground of yuck in a public drinking fountain, then every time I see a public drinking fountain over time, if I'm getting conditioned to recognize the trigger, I might rather have or think about, at least, a Dasani water. Now, there may not be truth in advertising there because who knows how clean or not clean a public drinking fountain is. But if you ever go to Disney and watch a kid snot on those and lick them and do some of the crazy things, you'll be buying a bottle of Dasani water like I do. That actually is a trigger for me. So, triggers. They matter. How can you build your marketing, your product, maybe, and actually this is really important, can you think of ways to make your product and or service actually have the trigger value within it automatically? But on top of that, how do you market in the trigger mindset? Okay, next one. Emotion. What emotion do I get from your product? And can I get a strong correlation? Do you elicit love, fear, uh, anger, excitement? One of the best emotional brands in my mind is actually Red Bull. It's the emotion of excitement. Red Bull, if you're a skydiver, you're holding a Red Bull at the end of your skydiving thing. If you're a X Games skateboarder, you know, you've got your Red Bull in hand ready to rock. It's branded everywhere. That is actually an emotional brand. How about making things public? The more you can see a behavior, the more likely you're going to get monkey see, monkey do. So let's assume we have a product that is hidden. Axe body spray. What do you do with Axe body spray? If you're at home in the bathroom, post shower, you're nice, fresh and clean, or maybe you're not nice, fresh and clean and you're trying to cover things up, you spray in private. How could we raise that to a public activity? What if we took a mini bottle, put a carabiner clip on these, the end, and in our advertising, we were training preteens and teens to be axe men. You clip it on your backpack, you wear it around, and the girls swoon over the axe man. 
that would make that behavior and the smell all connect in a public setting. Because you don't know why a kid smells weird going down the hall, good or bad. And you would if he's an axe man. Practical value. You know, YouTube's full of practical value, how to this and, you know, how to do that, where to explore on a vacation. There's all sorts of practical value happening. And the more unusual the practical value, the more avant-garde, let's say, the more it might get shared in the socials. It, it's neat to have practical value. And Berger, <laughs> he uses a very unusual practical value um, in, in his text. He talks about a blender that could blend, like, I, I think it's like spoons and iron and all sorts of things to prove how strong and remarkable that blender is. But it's got practical value because it's just not going to break down. It's a great and incredible blender. So if you can offer that type of practical value, and I'm sure that blender manufacturer is offering all sorts of recipes and different ways of using and creating with their product, you've just got stacks and stacks of practical value. That's a good thing. And in the same line as practical value, I've used toilet paper as an example for elasticity of goods in comparison to Gary Vee's before. Let's keep with that and talk about $15 rolls of toilet paper. That is the opposite of practical value. However, if I could get a family of four to get through an entire year on a $15 roll of toilet paper, that would have great practical value for a variety of reasons. And sneezers, if you go back up to the top to social currency, might be the leaders who get that tribe going, but the practical value would be undeniable. You don't have to keep searching. You don't run out, un, you know, unfortunately, while you're busy doing your thing. And uh, there's just a stack of practical value with something that remarkable. And lastly, and I think this is really actually awesome that Berger put it last in his list, it's stories. Because we are hyper-focused, I am, on telling great stories. And in all of those categories, there's an opportunity to tell a great story. And we are story-based people. That is humanity in its you know simplest. So we need to tell a great story, and it is a great opportunity. You know, I would argue that stories alone actually are less valuable in being contagious than if you were to stack stories along with other aspects of this contagious continuum. So stories are ultra important. I am a professional storyteller, but I am also very aware that in a marketer's world, we have to consider all aspects and it is the highest and best use for a storyteller to include thought discipline in looking at all of the other aspects of a contagious product. These pillars are really important to me. And you know what, vlog world, all of the followers who might be watching this, I want you to hear me say this to also my own personal customers. I take things like this into account because anytime somebody comes to me and says, make me an epic video, I love the excitement behind that request, but I actually personally refuse to just take that maxim and run with it because it's not going to do my customer, my client, frequently my friend, any good unless I do the due diligence to assure that my epic video has ROI value. It's very hard with video, it's very hard with social media to actually understand and quantify ROI. There are ways to do it. But if you don't actually attempt to pursue that, you're pretty much guaranteed to miss. So I would like to encourage you, if you're watching this, if you're in the marketing world, if you are a professional, if you're a professional storyteller, don't forget the nuts and bolts of building a proper marketing message and infuse that into your story. Don't let it so influence you that you destroy your story, but don't destroy your effort and don't destroy a good story by giving it almost no marketing value. This vlog might be the most honest, direct truth about how I personally operate in the video world. I really believe what I'm telling you has value if you are a marketer, and if you're client side, or if you're agency side, on either side, I think this has value for you. So I'd love to talk to you more about this. If you want to start conversing in the chat down below, let's actually iron sharpens iron. Let's talk about this and let's grow together. I'm grateful you're here. Like, subscribe, let's do this.